Mackey. Tēnā koe, Mr Chair, tēnā tātou e te whare i rotu i te wiki o te rau Māori, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Mr Chair, I'm happy to stand and take a call on the estimates for housing, although it must be said that this year's budget for housing was underwhelming, to say the least. Yeah, and I'm very pleased right. to have the Minister of Housing in the chair because the duration of my speech is roughly the length of time that he allowed himself to be questioned at estimates this year before the Select Committee and guarded by the, the very good chairmanship of Katrina Shanks. Uh, the Minister of Housing spent most of his time recounting stuff he could see on the Housing New Zealand website and answering questions as slowly as was physically possible in order to chew up the time so that he didn't have to face questioning of his appropriation from members of the opposition. So I have five minutes here, Mr Chair, and I want to make sure that I try and I've got well four four and a half minutes now to try and make sure that we get some adequate um, adequate looking at this appropriation that we didn't get at select committee this year which is a shame now the first thing we look at is state housing and last year the minister Phil Heatley made such a song and dance about this he was going to fix it he leapt up and down we were we were we, we enjoyed the demonstrations in Parliament every single week well where is that gone now where is that gone all the money for new state houses has gone. In fact, Housing New Zealand have been told that they will have to find savings in their, in their baseline appropriation in order to fund new housing and in order to fund maintenance. And I'm pleased the Minister seems to think he's fixed the housing problem in New Zealand in one year. The recession is over for him. But I say to the Minister, the recession is not over for the 11,000 families sitting on the Housing New Zealand waiting list right now. 11,000 families. So the Minister's come up with an options and advice service, and it appears that the main thrust of the options and advice service is to get people off the Housing New Zealand waiting list. It's to push them into the private sector, whether or not they can afford it. And I've spoken to, to the emergency accommodation providers like Monty Cecilia, who tell me options and advice clients are turning up on their doorstep and they've lost everything. They've lost everything because they were put into accommodation they couldn't sustain. They weren't told that they might be eligible for a house in New Zealand home, and they ended up losing all their work and income entitlements in terms of advances. Uh, they lost their money because they had to leave a property that they couldn't afford. And this minister, I said to him, why don't you just do a needs assessment for every person who comes into Housing New Zealand, those that are category C and D put through options and advice, fair enough, those that are A and B and will probably get a state house, put them through that process, and he refuses to do so. The only thing I can draw from that is that options and advice is all about keeping people off waiting lists. Yes. So now we also have a reconfiguration of state housing. And the minister's identified 20,000 state houses that he thinks can be reconfigured, which means sold. Of course, sold and, of course, the community housing sector tell me that they believe the minister expects them to pick it up. <coughs> and a lot of them have said to me, well, he's in la-la land if he thinks that they can afford to pick up 20,000 state houses off the government. But I am pleased. I am pleased to know that the Minister has promised that there will be absolutely no net reduction in state housing in New Zealand. Because this is a Minister who has actually done nothing to address the issue of supply of housing in New Zealand. The fact is he is building far less state houses than the former Labor government was every single year, yet the demand is growing. He has done nothing for affordable housing. The shared equity scheme, Labor set up a shared equity pilot, two years. Of that 24 months, 20 months of it was under that minister, Phil Heatley. And what did he tell Housing New Zealand? Don't promote it. Don't tell people it exists. Then at the end of the pilot, he said, I'm getting rid of it because of the low uptake. Well, the low uptake was probably because Housing New Zealand were told not to tell New Zealanders that it was there. So the shared equity scheme is gone. The gateway affordable housing scheme that we've been promised since the election has yet to eventuate. It got no funding in this year's budget. The minister has done nothing for affordable housing. In state housing, we've, had, we've been privy to wonderful displays of emotion and theatre in the House, but the reality is that we're getting more and more people coming through our offices unhappy with Housing New Zealand. Housing New Zealand staff with a thousand cases. Tenancy managers with a thousand cases, minister, that is not good enough, and that does not mean that that frontline service is adequately serving the public as it should be. 
And on the issue of homelessness, the Minister has continued to block a select committee inquiry into homelessness that Labour has been calling for, that the Coalition to End Homelessness has been calling for, that the sector has been calling for. He thinks it's OK that Rugby World Cup tenants will be kicked out of their homes during the Rugby World Cup, that boarding house tenants will be kicked out of their homes during the Rugby World Cup. Not good enough, Minister. No.